Hello friends, today on Shield of Faith, we're going to be talking about two interesting topics that might not be what you expect that I'm talking about. I want to talk about my favorite sin, and I want to talk about intimacy. Do I have your attention? <laughs> Let's start right off the bat here. What is my favorite sin? Synergy. Oh, I didn't expect that, huh? Uh huh. Synergy. Synergy is one of the most fantastic ideas. One example of synergy is with oxen. Now, my girlfriend's father used to train oxen and, and so on. I don't know much about it, but that was something he knew how to handle deal. So I looked things up. Did you know that a trained ox can pull 5,000 pounds and an untrained ox can pull 2,000 pounds? But if you put the two together, the trained and the untrained, they pull 10,000 pounds. You get that? 5 plus 2 equals 10. Now, if both ox get trained after time, it's 15,000 pounds. 5 plus 5 equals 15. That's synergy. That's the power of working together. Now, there's a term that I grew up hearing about, which might mean different things to people, but the idea is, the, of the church universal. You ever heard that expression? The church universal. What that means is the church throughout time. All the apostles, saints, prophets, citizens of the kingdom of God, disciples, anybody in God's household, all the true believers, followers, saved people, all those in God's family, God's kingdom, throughout all of time, that the work we do together would be greater than what we could do by ourselves. I'd like to read with you from Ephesians chapter 2. Hear these words of St. Paul, beginning with the 11th verse. Therefore remember that at one time you were Gentiles in the flesh, called the uncircumcision, by what is called the circumcision which is made in the flesh by hands. Remember that you were at that time separated from Christ, alienated from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Jesus Christ, you who were once far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ, for he himself is our peace who has made us both one and has broken down in, the, in his flesh the dividing wall of hostility. By abolishing the law of commandments and ordinances that he might create in himself one new man in the place of two, so making peace, and might reconcile us both to God in one body through the cross, thereby killing the hostility. And he came and preached peace to you, who were far off, and peace to those who were near. For through him we both have access in one spirit to the Father. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone, and whom the whole structure being joined together grows into a holy temple in the Lord. In him you also are being built together into a dwelling place for God by the Spirit. Here ends God's scripture reading. Well, in these verses that we hear, we hear about two different situations. One, two groups of people, those with God, and those outside of God's people. You know, the, the aliens, those with no hope, who are far off, separated, strangers are called. 
Well, that's, that's interesting. And I know that I've been convicted in recent times about my own attitude about us and them. For me, as a counselor, my idea of us and them is I'm not one of those people. I'm not an addict. You see, I've never used illegal drugs. I've only really been drunk once in my life. That was it. So that's not me. I'm not an addict because I don't do what those people over there did. And then I learn more and more about it. Then I learn, for example, addiction. It can be what we do. It's not just things like alcohol. It can be behaviors. It can be relationships. And then realizing that I had been participating in some very addictive behaviors. Now for me, it was internet gaming. Role play games on the internet. To the point I was spending over 40 hours a week playing games on the internet, staying up all night. Of course, that was making a wreck of my family, my career, my health, my relationships, all the things that any other addiction can damage were being damaged by what I was doing. So I had to come to terms with that and realize that God was telling me that don't think you're above somebody else just because your sins don't look like theirs. It doesn't make me any better. Just I found my own way to mess up my life, which we all seem to be able to do. Am I right? Yeah. So how do we bring people together and see those connections? Well, I believe only God can really bring us together. Now, earlier today, I was part of something remarkable. You see, I was part of a prayer circle. And in that prayer circle, there were Baptist, Pentecostal, Nazarene, Forces, Lutheran, Alliance, CMA, whatever. Wow, we had quite a spectrum of ways that we look at our faith, practice our religion, and so on. Praying together in the name of Jesus Christ for unity, for our ministries, that whatever style we had, that we would bring Jesus Christ into people's lives, those that need him. It wasn't theology, it wasn't interpretation of scripture, it wasn't the social, political issues, and so on. And I'm sure we could find ways to divide ourselves on those things. But it was this compassion that Jesus felt. You know, if you look at Mark 6, for example, Mark 6 it starts out with Jesus He's telling disciples, let's go off and have some time. You know, we've been so busy, not even able to eat. And they try to go off, and the crowds follow them. And then they take off another time, right after that. Jesus spends time teaching and doing with them, and, and even the feeding of the thousands. And they go to another place, trying to get some time for themselves. And again, the people follow, and Jesus has compassion on them, reaching out to them. The power of being together. Now one of the topics that comes up a lot when I'm doing counseling with people is the topic of intimacy. Uh, the way I understand intimacy in a counseling perspective is into me you see. Intimacy. Intimacy, it's not just the physical relationship. Intimacy has to do any ways that we come together. Well, there could be a lot of things. We could enjoy the same food or the same music or the same art. We could do a task together. We could talk about our professions. I can get together with other, other preachers and talk about the craft of preaching or whatever it might be. So intimacy is when we have that friendship and connection where we enjoy each other's company, we have things to share with each other. That's the power, for example, of support groups. How, why do support groups work? Because you can see into each other. And working together, you're more powerful than working separately. 
Lives change. Just finding out how we are the same changes lives. Aristotle is credited with saying, the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. Well, that's true. So what can unite us all, bring us together? The compassion, the love of Jesus Christ, our love of God, our love of Jesus, and loving our neighbor. That's it. As long as we pray together, talk together, in Jesus' name, we know we are loved. Amen.